Morning guys, how are we doing on this beautiful Thursday? It's uh, bright and breezy today, a little bit cold because I'm on site a little bit earlier than I am normally. Normally I'm around here about eight o'clock, but today it's seven o'clock in the morning. Now, we've got a lot to fit in this episode. What are we doing? We've got, we're going on the roof doing some work. I'm going on a little excursion. There's gonna be an explosive surprise. And we've also got a fair few questions coming our way. So, what is, why am I teasing? Why are we having such a good day today? Well, for me, I'm in such a good mood purely because today's my birthday. And I thought, rather than just go to work and just go home, why don't we make it a little bit more interesting? Hence why I asked all you guys to ask me some questions, which we're gonna go through a bit later on. So yeah, thank you we got all you guys for the questions. We're gonna to get to those a little bit later on in the episode, but right now, we're on a bit of a tight schedule. It's just before seven o'clock, I don't know what time it is, about seven o'clock, and we, uh, we've got to go on a little trip at about half past nine, quarter to 10. So I'm up early because I want to get a little bit of work done before we go on this excursion. So what we're going to do is we're going to go jump straight up on that roof, get some stuff done, and then we're going to carry on with this day, which um, is going to be great. So yeah, happy birthday to me. <laughs> oh yeah, right, okay. Before we get going, down in the comments, I'm interested. How old do you think I am? How old, on this day, on this beautiful Thursday, my birthday, how old am I today? Down in the comments, whoever gets it correct first or closest, no, yeah, whoever gets it correct, first of all, I'll pin that comment and put it at the top so you know you're the winner. Right, okay, perfect. Down there, you get, that, you get going on down there while I jump up on this roof and we'll get a few buttons thrown in. Right, see you in a minute. <laughs> Right, so there's a couple of hours done. We got the side of the dormer done and the bit in between that I didn't do yesterday. But right, I'll quickly show you. So we've got this little section in between these two dormers finished up to the ridge and then this side of this dormer done as well. We'll do this one a bit later on, but I'm in a bit of a rush at the moment because we need to get somewhere and we need to get somewhere a bit quick. So what I'm gonna do, go home, I need to have a quick shower and change into my civvies and then we're gonna go on a little road trip. And uh, yeah. Well, I can't show you everything, but you'll see a little bit. It's a bit of a birthday present to myself. So right, okay, I'm gonna do a bit of a bit of a twist, so buckle yourself down and I'll tornado you guys so I'm all sorted. Right, you ready? Let's go. <sighs> oh, that's better. Right, okay, excuse the echo in here, wind doors. I've quickly got dressed and I just wanna say that this, the t-shirt I'm wearing might be a giveaway to what I'm going about to do, but it might not be, so this is what I'm wearing. Get in the comments, do you have any idea what I'm just about to do? Right, we better get a wriggle on. So I'm gonna leave you guys here with this camera because where I'm going, if I walk in there with this camera, with this, with this microphone on the top and everything, they're probably gonna think something untoward's going on. So I'll leave you guys here with this camera and I'll probably just use my phone. Right, but like I said, I won't be able to film much. Right, okay, I'll see you guys in a minute.
I'm just about to go into the scene, uh, go into the cinema, see this awesome film. I can't wait to see this. I've been waiting to see it for so long. Right, I've got my snacks. Just to hip out here, so I will see you guys when I come out. Well, holy biscuits, that was a good film. Mate, I enjoyed that immensely. Let me know down in the comments, any of you guys Marvel fans? Whew. Blimey. Right, anyway, we're back. Now, onto the Q&A. What I thought I'd do is have a nice little campfire, sit down, have a little, a little nice gathering, and we'll go through a few of these questions together. So, I've prepared a campfire. I don't know if this is a good idea doing what I'm about to do, but you know me, not full of good ideas. It's going to involve one can of petrol. Yeah, I know I've got a fire extinguisher, but I'm not being funny. I don't really think that's going to do much. So, but we got that just in, well, I think that's more for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into that bucket, take these spears, well, I'm going to call them flaming spears of justice, douse these two bits of rag in said petrol, leave them a country mile away, take this, I'm going to throw it right where that old drawer is in that area, leave that area with the petrol on it, go back, grab the spear, chuck it in there at what I would see as a safe distance and hopefully boom but failing that if that petrol does not go boom what I'm going to do is I'm leaving this section clear so this stuff will go up easy so it's far enough away that I'm not going to get blown up or any petrol on me and I'll come in here and I'll just light a little fire and it will slowly drag that way now that's the plan before we go ahead I just want to say do not do anything like this at home away from home, anywhere, anywhere you can possibly think of, don't do this, don't do it at all. It is not a good idea, it's not a clever idea, it's a very stupid idea. So please, don't do this yourselves, just watch me doing it, and that's the end of it. No one's gonna get hurt. Right, okay, I'm a little bit nervous about this actually. I don't know whether I should just make a little fire and just light it slowly, but on your birthday, normally you blow candles out, I'm kinda looking to blow one up. <laughs> right. Hopefully it doesn't go the way of episode two. Link up here to that video. That, that was close. That could have been a lot worse than it was. Right, let's get set up and let's see if we can start a little campfire. By the gods that went bang! 
I'll tell you what, I was going to sit in my wheelbarrow down here and talk to you guys with that, but that is hot, so I'm going to wait a minute. Those flames, almost as tall as that tree out the back there. I feel like I'm in the bloody desert with this heat, so... God, I'll tell you what, that was good, wasn't it? That's been there since episode two, and I've been meaning to burn out for ages, so... Happy birthday to me, and I'll tell you what, I'm not going to try and blow that out. That ain't got a chance on that no way so well, it's almost gone really it's only been lit about 15 20 minutes so yeah i think i'll sit back and enjoy it and i'll come back to you for the q a in a minute yeah oh it's raining all sorts around here i feel like daenerys has given me a dragaris or whatever it is and only old dragons has had a go on me right i'm going to sit back and enjoy this for a little bit so i'll see you in a minute Oh, well guys, mate, I tell you, that was a fire, crikey. It's still going at the moment, I'll turn you around in a minute, but, right, the Q&A. So yesterday I asked you all uh, to send a question, if there's something you wanted to know, and we've got, I reckon, about 40 questions here, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll do every single question. I'll do the whole lot, and this will just be an extra long episode. Well, you, you're going to know that now because you're going to see it anyway, I'm walking on. Right, so... Let's just dive right in and start with the first question. Okay. FN Romeo asks, what is the worst injury you've had while doing brickwork? The worst injury I've had. Um, it was something in my eye. I did cut myself. I've got a tiny little scar here. I did cut myself on an engineering brick. I was down in the footings on a house and I had snapped a header and I just stacked it down the, down into the footing basically it was about I don't know about yay high stacked it down fell down there was a corner there I just caught just caught my arm just caught my arm and mate you know when you cut yourself and you can see see white and it just doesn't bleed it was that so that was that one what I'm going to do is I'm going to like it uh, I'm going to heart love every video uh, every comment as I go through so I know where we've gone so hopefully FN Romeo that answers your question right next one Louis, Louis Hilson, favourite brick lane trail? Favourite brick lane trail? Well, I've always used Marshalltown. I did use a Wix own one for a while. That was, it was okay. Marshalltown, I use a, a Philadelphia pattern uh, 11 inch. And I, it's just something that I've, I've used for so long. I've never really tried any other different um, trails. So that one has just been my staple. I've had three of them, I think three of them in my time. And yeah, I think that's that's pretty much my favourite one. <laughs> really, the only one, because the Wix one, it was all right, but wouldn't call it the best one in the world. <laughs> okay, Kyle Arts, what's all those blocks? <laughs> okay, yeah, the blocks that are just here. <laughs> no, I didn't overorder. So, <laughs> and Lawrence Curran also beat me to it. Yeah, so, right, what are all these blocks for? There's two and a half thousand blocks there. Basically, when I bought all the ones for this house, I know I knew the fella who was in the builders merchant who I got all the bricks and everything from, and he's a he's a good lad, and basically he done me a right good deal on it, and I knew a mate of mine, he was going to build a warehouse, so I ordered extra ones. It's only say warehouse, it's more like a, a, a four a four style garage, like a massive garage. He's um, he's into his mechanics and things like that. So basically, I bought them for him. Now. I'm not going to tell you how much I got for because I think he watches this. So, mate, yeah, you know who you are. I'm going to make a few quid off him. He's already bought them off me, so <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, basically, I bought them cheap and uh, gave them, gave them, sold them to my mate. Okay, so Joshua Pope. How long did I labour before you got, got on the trowel? Right, how long did I labour for? It was, I'd say it was probably about a year. A year or so, a year and a half. I used to, I came straight out of uh, college, not brickworking college, I used to go to art college actually. I wanted to be an artist. And so I went, I came out of there and I went to work with my dad, who's a bricklayer, builder, my granddad builders, my two uncles are builders. Yeah, pretty much runs in the family. So I went and worked with him because I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at the time. I was going to get a job at uh, uh, an amusement park, like, um, building the, the rides like the artist side like all the scenery and things like that but i just didn't in the end i went and worked with my dad and 
I was labouring for a while and then naturally just picked up a trail, started going from there. My dad taught me a fair few things and yeah, just progressed from there. So I'd say about a year to a year and a half. I was quite lucky really because I was working with my dad for about four years. Okay, Swift X. In all honesty, how many years would you say it took you to learn everything there is to know about bricklaying? Right, I can hands down tell you right now, I don't know everything there is to know about bricklaying. If anyone says they know everything there is to know about bricklaying, they're a liar or they're just some arrogant twat. Basically, I think, personally speaking, I think that education is the way to go and you should always be educating yourself, you should always be learning, you should always be pushing yourself because if you think you're the best, then you've got nowhere to go. And guarantee you, even if you think that, there's always going to be people out there that are better than you. So always treat yourself, don't ever treat yourself as being the best bricklayer in the world because you're not. And if you think you are, then you're never going to get any better. Okay, so there we go. That's that one. All right, on to the next one. Baz Royale or Royal Royale. What part of the country are you in? I I live in Surrey in the United Kingdom. So that's where I'm in. Uh, X Hayes. Have you ever worked abroad? I have. I have worked in Bulgaria and I have also spent a few months working on site in Australia. I was working, oh mate, it was so much fun in Australia. The Bulgaria was all right. It was more sort of, we only went there for a, a week to build a friend of mine's dad's garage. It was good fun. But in Australia, mate, I was, uh, I was staying in Cairns for about three months. I worked for a company called, I believe it's Glencorp. So if anyone, I know there's a few of you Aussies out there, if there's anyone who, I'll tell you what, I hope my head's in this shot. If there's anyone out there who works in Cairns and if Glencorp, Glencorp is still there, let me know down in the comments. But yeah, so we, uh, the geezer who owned the company bought a um, bought a zoo. So I did a load of work on a zoo out there. That, that, was, that was very interesting. I enjoyed that. Okay, so on to the next one. Mark Hepp. All right, Mark, how you doing? You all right? I really enjoyed your video about the arch. That was good. I like that. Okay, so Mark says, I was wanting to know when I first started watch when you first started watching this, is the house for me to live in or am I selling it or am I doing it for someone else? Now this is a question that I've had a lot and I haven't answered it. So basically I'll answer now. This house it's for me and my girlfriend and the house next door is going to we're not quite Long, long and short of it is, the two houses, we're not sure what we're going to do with it yet, whether we're, we're going to live in it, whether we're going to rent it out, or whether we're going to sell it. Because all the planning, everything that I did, everything that was put forward for this, I did before I met my girlfriend, who I would say is, we're going to get married next year, so my fiance, I should really call her. So before I met her, this was all in progress, and then I met her, and then a few years later it started. So naturally she's part of it now. She's going to be my wife, so naturally she's part of it. But it's an ongoing thing we still don't know what we're going to do with it we don't know whether we're going to sell it keep it we're, so basically in answer to the question sorry but we're not sure okay so next one AS do you see hard hats as a necessity or a nuisance I'm curious because you put such an emphasis on PPE yet never wear any now I openly admit I don't wear a hard hat I wear boots well these are trainers but I wear boots now I think they're both a nuisance and also a necessity a nuisance because when you're wearing a hard hat walking around you're always bashing it on, on the scaffold and things like that it is a pain in the ass but it's a necessity because I was working on a job once um, we were building uh, like 14 floor flats some geezer wasn't wearing a hard hat someone knocked a brick off the top floor whacked him on the head and he I don't know I don't know I was only working there for the day basically I don't know what happened to the fella so you should always wear PPE always wear boots no people say don't they don't wear boots they wear trainers no always wear PPE just because I don't wear a hard hat I'm walking around here I'm the only person here if, if there were more than me more than just me here mate I'll be wearing a hard hat all the time but that is that uh, hopefully that answers your question okay on to the next one Frank Cranfield hello mate is this your house or are you building it for someone else it is my house I'm not building it mate if I was building this for someone else I think they'd be a bit unhappy me taking this long to build a house okay next one Tom George, what advice would you give to someone who's starting a bricklaying co college course in the coming months? I did a video about this. Um, I'll link it up here. Actually, no, I'll link it in the description because, yeah, I'll link it in the description. Basically, I bought a book called The Successful Guide to Brickwork and I read it three times or thereabouts, I can't remember exactly, three times or so before I went and did my college. So I would suggest getting that book 
go back, check that video, look at that book. That helped me so much because every time there was a question coming in, I knew it. But also, if you're talking about the practical side of it, if you have enough space perhaps in your garden, even if it's just a small little area, get a few bricks from work or pull a few out of skip or something like that and just get a trowel and practice. Just brick on brick, just stretch a bond, just practice. If you haven't if you haven't had a go, just, just practice. And whenever you're at college, just keep practicing, keep practicing. That's what I'd say to that. Hopefully that helps you out. And uh, good luck with your college course. And uh, let me know, let me know how it goes. Be interested to hear from you. All right, okay, next one. Adam, <laughs> what a name, Adam Stud 28. Okay, here we go. Hi bud, if you could do this, hold on, if you could just make my day. Could you show me or explain how I would set out a building with, with lines, getting it square, and what you can be done right i'm not going to be able to do that in a q a i'm sorry my friends but what i will do is oh paul murphy replied to that says pythagoras theorem buddy a compass and some strings lots of strings yes it is that's not something i can answer right here right now i did do a video briefly on about setting out if you go back i'll put that in the link in the description as well i did do a video on setting out so hopefully there's some tips there but i know i could have done it better so i'll i'll Basically, when I do the next house, I'll probably do a better video, a more in-depth, in-depth video, so that we can all, we can all learn together and just sort of progress. So hopefully, hopefully that that answers your question. Okay, next one, Mr. TK Channel. My quote is, "What made you want to be a bricklayer?" Right. Okay. So as I said, my dad's a bricklayer, my my granddad was a bricklayer, my uncles are bricklayers, and it even goes further back than that. It's sort of a long line of bricklayers. There. Are, there are photos of me. I'll have to try and dig one out before I edit this. There's, I'm not even, I'm not even three. I'm like walking and I've got a trowel in my hand. My dad's building walls and I'm, I'm there. I think it's something that when I was growing up, you see your dad, I saw, I saw my dad as my hero and I wanted to be my dad basically. And I see him building things, I see him doing things and I was, I want to do that. And I guess it's just sort of ingrained in the in the bloodline, really, because everyone's done it, and I've done it as well. So I, it was just something that I thought I wanted to do. Originally, I did want to be an architect, but then that, that quickly fell out of me because, well, I just, no, drawing wasn't enough. I wanted to actually build something. And so that's, hopefully that's um, answered your question. Okay, on to the next one. Jackal Entertainment. I've been doing this for the school year and loving it and glad found you i was curious if there was ever a time you experienced a rough or bad job site mate i'll tell you what i've been through some bad jobs and some rough jobs i have uh, i'm trying to think of an example i can't think of uh, one main example off the top of my head but i have been on a couple of jobs that i have done and i've just wanted to see the back of it just purely because things just don't go right uh, sometimes you get you get subcontractors in working for you that sort of mess things about. Sometimes I'd say the first job I ever did, no, I'll tell you, like, the second job I ever did when I started out on my own, I underpriced it, and I, I underpriced it by probably about five grand. So I had to suck up a lot of money on that. I paid myself towards the end of the job. I paid myself a hell of a lot less than I should have been earning. And also by the end of it, I in fact also paid two and a half thousand pounds out of my own pocket to finish that job. And I'll tell you what, I've never underpriced a job since. So hopefully that was uh, answering your question. Okay, the next one. Oh yeah, I saw this one last night. Okay, Jok Jokaya03, this question has nothing to do with the building trade. What is your dream car if you can afford it? Right, my dream car. How much time have you got? Okay, my dream car. There's, I'd probably say, there's two two major ones that I would say are my dream cars. No, I'd say three, so let's go with three. Right, number one, a 1969 Dodge Charger, like the one at Foster Furious One. That is my number one, well, I'd say they're all my number one dream car. Number two is probably the, the one that is probably least out of my reach, is I, I would love a Lamborghini Aventador got to be said and the one that's probably most in my reach is I would love a uh, um, Land Rover Def uh, Defender 1 110 yeah 110 because I want to put a tent on the top that nice bit of off-road so there you go hopefully that answers your question next one wheat and bread my question to you is what do you prefer working on as a big layer large building sites or domestic work as in house extensions garden walls etc etc uh, likes and dislikes of both Right, okay, big sites. I've never been a fan of big sites. I just don't like, 
I've just had bad experiences with them in in the whole time. I've probably only spent a few months on on sites like that. I don't like. I have never liked the the brick lane foreman that I've worked with. I just I don't like being told what to do if I think I can do it a bit a different way. I don't like being told when I can have my lunch. I don't like being told when I can come in. Come in. I don't like being told when I can go home. Basically, I don't like being told what to do. I much prefer doing domestic extensions, houses, things like this when I'm the boss because I make my own hours. I do what I. I do things the way I think is the way it should be done. Everyone works in different ways, different strategies and things like that. But that, that's, hopefully that answers your question. That's pretty much the, uh, the ins and outs of it. Right, okay, next one. Oh, this segues nicely into this one. Scott Redshaw, have you done much site work? Like I said, probably only about, I'd say tops three, three months in total, three, four months in total. If you're talking about big sites, I've worked for companies on sites, but not like, people like Octagon or or like Barrett Homes, things like that, like the big, the big people. If that's what you're on about site work, I, it's not my cup of tea. I just, I like doing things my way. I don't like working for people. Like after I, I finished my apprenticeship, I went self-employed within two weeks. I was, it, yeah, never looked back. Right, next one. Jacob Machin, Machin, as the, ex in it, oh, <laughs> you're not an inexperienced labourer. Everyone starts there, you're just a labourer, mate. You, you'll get there. Um, when did you decide bricklaying was the job for you? <laughs> Pretty much since I came out of the womb, mate. <laughs> it was, um, it's inbuilt in me. It's something, like I said before, parents, um, my dad, granddad, uncles, all brickies, kind of runs in the family, so hopefully that answers your question. Jim Newlands, right Rodin, an old favourite question for you. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> mate, I like that, that's a good one. Go on, Jimmy. I can, well, it's got to be a hundred duck-sized horses. There's no way. You see how ferocious ducks can be? Oh, and one the size of a horse. I mean, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see both of them. But I'll, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't find the, the big one. Yeah, a hundred duck-sized horses. That's for sure, mate. <laughs> okay, next one. Paul Murphy, why have you got half a billion blocks? Are you doing retainers? As I, as I enlightened before, they're for a mate of mine. <clears throat> got them on the cheap. Okay. Jamie Morgan, how do you cal calculate how many bricks and mortar you need for a job? Right, bricks is simple. Uh, there's 60 bricks to a square meter. If you do 64, that allows a percentage for uh, wastage. And you, you 64 times whatever the square meters of the build you do. Uh, in the case for mortar, do you know what? I've always struggled with that, but there is, I have a mortgage calculator. I think it's on, my, it's on an app somewhere and I use that because mortar, I find it's, it's a bit, I know a lot of people say you get about 10, 10 barrel loads, you get about 10 barrel loads out of a ton bag, uh, and a barrel load is probably about, I don't know, about 100 bricks or something like that, so from there you can work it out. But I use a mortgage, um, a mortgage calculator, a mortar calculator. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, next one, Craig Evo. Are you working on other jobs whilst building the house? And how, how did you find planning process for getting planning permission? I'm not working on other jobs, this is full time. And a planning permission was an absolute nightmare. It took three years to get planning permission. The area with this, these houses that are on is, um, it's not quite Greenbelt land, but it's close to it. And basically it was an absolute nightmare. And I think the architect that we used was dragging his feet a little bit to get more money out of us. So it wasn't the best process and I would not use them again. Hopefully that answers your question. Right, Tank Gamer 15. When are you planning on being in the house? Like I said, if we're gonna be in the house, it'd be sort of the end of the year. If, I, Like I said, I'm not sure what we're doing with the house as yet. So, um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, Jam C. Right, before I carry on, I'm just gonna make sure this is still recording. Right, Jam C. Hi mate, what are you plan, uh, planning with the garden? You have a huge pile of, pile of blocks there, leftovers or future projects? Right, as we said, the blocks, they're, they're gonna be going sort of, he hasn't got planning yet, so I'm not sure when they're going, but I'll probably move them around. In regards to the garden, I'm probably just gonna turf it. Well, I'm gonna clear it first, because there's just crap everywhere. So I'm probably just gonna turf the whole lot and probably have planters either side, something quite simple. But knowing me, I'll probably change my mind at some point. Right, okay, next, Mike Stewart. What's your favorite trade other than bricklaying? How long, of oh, course, cool, you love a question, don't you? 
All right, we'll start with What's your favorite trade other than brick lane? Uh, I'd say landscaping. How long was the process to acquire the land? Blah, blah, planning to start the build. So in regards to the land, the land has been owned for a number of years. This has been in the family for a number of years. So acquiring land wasn't a problem. The planning, however, was, like I said, about three years. That was a pain in the ass. Um, from the moment when you actually thought you wanted to build, all right. Do you have to sell this first one to fund the second one? As I said, I'm not exactly sure what we're doing with it yet. How big's your trowel, excuse me? Bit of a personal question, isn't it? I, as I said before, 11 inch Philadelphia pattern. Is this now what you want to do as a career, self-building? Right, okay. For a long time, me and my dad, we've always wanted to be property developers. And that is what I'm going to do. End of doing it here. We have done it in the past. Uh, there was one property which we still own that we developed it was a three bedroom house and we developed into a six bedroom house that was uh, our first go at that but yeah property developers that is what I'm going to be doing um, I would probably will slowly get off the trail eventually but not yet I've still got plenty of going my going my wrist yet so that's that's not going to be happening yet but probably in the next 10 years or so I'll probably slowly uh, within 10 years I'll be just project managing uh, what's your thoughts on Brexit? Oh, the bollocks. How much more have you used to build this house? God, bloody hell, I wouldn't have a clue. There's a big hole there, so I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your multitude of questions. Right, so, Ben Keenan. My girlfriend Melissa is from Minnesota, but she recently moved to Scotland a few months ago because for some reason she wanted to, oops, sorry, because she wanted to give up her job to work with me. I'm currently employed as a general farm labourer, basically the guy who spreads dung and works the machines all day. Melissa watches your videos. Hi Melissa, how are you doing? Watches your videos and wanted to ask you if you've ever built a dry, a dry stone dyke wall before. I actually haven't, but they intrigue me. They are, that's art that is. So I'm, I, I will give it a go one day, but I haven't done, no. Um, they were used as old traditional Scottish farmers, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why she would give up her job to work with me, but there you go. I told her that it would be a lot of hard backbreaking work and you'll only get paid tuppence hankly for it. But she said she didn't care about the money, only wanted to work and be with me. Mate, she's a keeper. I tell you, if someone's going to leave their job and come to you, mate, you better marry that girl. Yeah, Melissa, I tell you what, yeah, you two sound great. Good luck to the pair of you. Hopefully uh, you work well together. <clears throat> and um, good luck to the pair of you because you, you, you two sound like you're, uh, you're a right pair. So, yeah, good on you. Okay, hopefully that answers your question as well. Yeah, I'd love to try a bit twice time all uh, Adam Chandler, hi mate. Would you be doing videos of other jobs you... Uh, will you be doing videos of other jobs you do? Would, you, would be great to see some of my other projects. Um, so, I have a sort of a future plan for what I want to do with you guys with this channel and everything and basically I've, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a forever kind of plan I suppose if that's the right way of saying it basically I want to do this again and again and again and again just continually do basically as I said I want to be a property developer or kind of already are and I want to this is I'm absolutely loving doing YouTube so I want to mix the two passions together and hopefully just make just keep it going keep it going see where it goes so I'll be doing other jobs but like this I probably won't be doing them all on my own I'll be getting other people in but if there are smaller other jobs because loads of people ask me for work but at the moment I can't do it because I'm doing this but I hope hopefully that answers your question uh, right okay David Coe are you self-employed or do you work for a firm? I'm 17, would like to set an apprenticeship, live up in Scotland, so a bit of a distance to go to college. I am self-employed. I have been self-employed since I left college as a fully um, fully qualified bricklayer. So that's, I've been, oh, about 10 years I've been self-employed. But before that I worked uh, for my dad. So again, I was self-employed kinda. And then I did work for a firm while I did my apprenticeship. So there was three years there where I did that. <clears throat> and mate, you should go for it. I, um, I don't know how how you, how it works up in Scotland, but if you can get to a college, then I would highly advise it. It's I, I I've absolutely loved being a bricklayer. I've absolutely loved doing it, and I would advise anyone if you have an interest in doing it to do it. Right. Okay. So we have got one, two, three, four more questions left. 
So, Josh Bergson, how is it working alone for, uh, for all this time? How is working alone for all this time affecting your mental health? Mate, I was mental before it started, so it's fine. <laughs> is it easier when you haven't got a client breathing down your neck? Mate, it's so much easier because it's not their fault. The thing is, if you don't understand how building works, you can sometimes get very frustrated because even I got frustrated here. You, you look at it and things don't happen. Nothing happens for ages. Then all of a sudden you get a building. So if you're out there and you have builders and you are getting frustrated with the fact that it looks like nothing's happening, stuff is happening, but sometimes it takes longer than you would anticipate. Whenever I've had a customer, I've always explained this before the get-go, but they still get frustrated when nothing happens. Uh, but yeah, uh, the one, I don't mind the breathing down the neck, that's fine, I do that quite well, but the one thing that really doesn't, uh, really winds me up is when people don't pay. And no, that that is the one thing with customers, but I guess in life, the one thing that really upsets me more than anything is when someone says they're gonna do something and then they don't do it. I get it all the time, I get subcontractors say, I'll be in on Monday, don't hear from them till Tuesday, or Wednesday or Thursday, just that really winds me up. Uh, I used to build gardens on my own, but the clients used to get proper upset because it looked stagnant to them, and that gave them, yeah, that gave you anxiety. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. It is, it is, it happens a lot. I, I've, I've done so many jobs where um, people are just like, "What's happening? What's happening?" But what I do, or what I used to do, is every time uh, I'd get a job with someone, because generally it'd be either building a house or building an extension or something like, something like that. I'd say we'd either have a weekly or bi-weekly meeting whether uh, it's by phone or something, just a, a quick sort, sort of like an update. I find that helps um, customers feel a lot more at ease. Okay, next one. Doug Hay, are you a toker? No, mate, I'm not a toker. I don't smoke. I don't smoke the reefer, the old Rastafarian old Holborn. I don't do drugs. I very rarely drink. I don't, I don't, I'm kind of boring, I suppose. I don't really do any of that. When I was in college, that was different, but we're not talking about that. Right, Travis is gay, ha <laughs> ha. Mate, I like your name, that's funny. Okay, afternoon bud, how you doing? I've been in my apprenticeship for nearly four months now and I'm struggling a little bit. Whoops, cool, whistle my S's there. And I'm struggling a little bit with the work. A lot of my gang don't want to help me or they do not have the time. Do you have any tips on what to do? Thanks mate, much appreciated. Okay, so if you're, um, you're doing your apprenticeship are you if you're going to college once a week like I did speak to your tutor ask them if you're struggling go uh, speak to them uh, with your gang I guess persistence speak to them if uh, it depends what you're struggling with if you're struggling with technical things then I'd say YouTube's a great place Just like uh, there's plenty of bricklayers out there on YouTube uh, me as well if, if there's anything you want me to do a video on then uh, then send me a message or, or put it in the comments or something and then let me know and then I can, I'll see if I can help you out. But definitely speak to your tutor. Or if there's anyone else you know that's in the game, even if it's not building, just speak to someone. Um, but definitely, I would say, or, or your boss. If, if it's not your, if it's the people in your gang who aren't, who aren't helping you out, then speak to your boss. Uh, it's, it's not very good going over the top of people. If you can speak to your gang about it, then talk to them first. But I'd also say definitely speak to your tutor. Hopefully that's of some help. If not, like, like I say, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can um, make a video to try and, if there's something you're not sure out or, or even point you in the right direction. I'll tell you what, uh, down in the link, um, in the description there's a link to my Instagram. Send me a DM on, on there and um, I'll see if I can, I'll, I'll try and help you, I'll try and help you if I can. Right, okay, the last one. We are on to the end of it. MD. Further information about the second house. Gonna film it too? Balls to the wall, I'm gonna film it. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be filming that for sure. Basically, the second house, what we're doing, this house, uh, I'm putting the roof on, I'm putting the tiles on, that's gonna, once it's weathered in, I'm getting people in to put the windows in. They're gonna put the windows and the doors in and things like that, it's gonna be sealed off. Uh, so once it's weather sealed, I'm gonna be getting other trades in, electricians, plumbers, etc., etc., to get this going. And while they're in here, I'm gonna clean this back garden out, get it all nice and sorted. Then I'm gonna start clearing for the next house. So hopefully by the summer, we should be starting on the next house. Right, that's all the questions. Thank you very much for the questions. And yeah, thank you very much for the questions. <laughs> I'm gonna go and check on this fire. Cool, I spoke for so long, I didn't really know what to say there. Um, let's have a look at this fire, eh? Well, that fire has slowly 
gone now. That's it. It's all done. Well, I say it's all done. There's a few bits and pieces. It looks like a bloody great bombs hit that. Crikey. Oh, that. someone asked about the sand. That's where all the sand's come from. So you want to know how much mortar? Add a load of cement to that. And that's that. And this is the quick go round of what I'm going to clear up. All this is going to get cleared up. And those are the blocks that are going to go eventually. I still don't know when, when he's going to... Uh, He's going to want them, but they're there. It's, it's not like I haven't got room, and I've got plenty of room now. All right, yeah. Crikey, that was a whopping great fire, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. Right, guys, that was my birthday. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I'll tell you what, I have thoroughly enjoyed my birthday today. You guys, you coming along with it, it's, it's, I've had such a fantastic day. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for going through the, the long episode. It's probably going to be like a 45, 50-minute episode, but... I had such a blast today. That explosion, we had a bit of work done this morning. That film was so good. And uh, Q&A, it was really good speaking to you guys. So, okay, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you all bright and breezy tomorrow morning. Cups of tea in hand. And we'll get some work. So take care. See you later. Ta-ra. Bye.